I'm trying to build an LSM launch for my roller coaster. Here's the first test. For the past year and a half since I started this channel, I have been working on a magnetic launcher for my model roller coasters. And about five months ago, I started to see some success in that endeavor. So today, I finally have something worth showing all of you. Why do I want to build a magnet launcher? Other than it being cool. That's about it. They're cool. There's a long explanation, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to use rubber bands and pulleys for projects. I did when I was 12. It sucked. I want a new problem now. There's a bunch of old assemblies from prototypes that were never going to work. We're just not going to cover those. Did you know that magnet wire is different from regular wire? I didn't. And that's why we're not covering them. I found these pre-wound coils on Amazon and they are perfect for what I want to do. I printed a quick housing for the coil and then hooked it up to my power supply. Here's it with two volts, six volts, 12 volts, and 24 volts. Yeah, you can do something with that, huh? Indeed you can pass, Mike. So let's start triggering that coil automatically. By using the Hall Effect mounts from my previous models, I can sense when the magnet is over top of the coil. From there, I can scale to multiple cars and multiple coils. This three car, two coil test was enough for me to start putting some real effort into designing a permanent coil mount. This housing keeps both house sensors in the correct place while keeping the coil from moving and wraps it all up into one nice connector. The only downside being I decided to use only black wires for all of this for aesthetic purposes, which means I need to break out the multimeter every single time I need to build one to make sure that my signals are in the right spots. With four coil housings complete, it was time to start testing again. I tested one car, two cars, and three cars at 12 volts. I tested three cars at 24 volts. And then I bumped the coil count up to four and bumped the voltage up to 24 volts and I was able to get this. It's not much, but I'm clearly making it over a small hill. So it's time to start building a real test track. It's time to build the test rig here. I'm gonna build like a little U so I can go up and down and up and down and really evaluate performance of the launch, so. Here's the first test with one car and four coils swinging back and forth. I was a little disappointed at this point. I thought the car was going to hit a higher equilibrium point. I hope your pattern recognition is settling in at this point because next is two cars and then three cars. At this point, I knew that four coils was not going to be getting me anywhere anytime soon. So I went ahead and built four more. And with eight coils, I had two cars going this high. That's all well and good, Mike, but I don't really know how any of this works, and I will give you the fifth grader explanation. It's come to my attention that I haven't really explained what's going on underneath the hood. We basically have a car with a magnet underneath it, two magnet sensors, and a coil in the middle. When the car passes over the first magnet sensor, it tells the coil to start pulling everything towards it. So the car goes in. It goes in, but it overshoots it just by a little bit. And that's just enough to trigger the other magnet sensor, which tells this magnet to now push. And so the car goes along its merry way. So we go like this. We pull, we pull, 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 and then we push, 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 push away. And if there's two cars, then we start pulling again, and then we start pushing again. Wow, what a great explanation, Mike. 
I'm sure that you're working on this project very diligently and aren't getting distracted on any other roller coaster models that you want to build. This is totally not an LSM launch that I'm sure everybody would want to see. Cedar Point just announced the Tilt Coaster. Say goodbye to LSM launch. You will get to see it again in a couple of weeks. Hi, my name is Michael and this is my linear synchronous motor that's not completely hooked up yet because I forgot how to make it work. <laughs> Indeed, I did forget how to make the launch work, but I did know that the next step was to take the mess of wires and put them into a box. I wanted to power the entire box from one source, so I bought these buck converters to take the 24 volt supply power down to 12 volts for my Pico daughter boards. This is the very first box I've built and I'm going to be powering it on for the very first time. So if it lights on fire, I figured I might as well get it on video. So power on in three, two, one. All right, no smoke, sorry guys. And everything was looking good from here until... So I've managed to light three Picos on fire. These are my last three Picos. Trying to figure out where the short is on this coil setup. These four I know are good. This one I think is toast. These three are TBD and I have three Picos left. I would ideally like to keep them around, but these are all loaded up with firmware. Oh. I was making the bad noise from the get-go. Let's lower the current down a ton. Man, this freaking sucks. All right, well, let's see if this guy's dead. Ow. Yeah, this is hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. What? Four dead Picos. That's dead. This is dead. Oh, this was working so well, like not that long ago. Dude, I wanna cry. Oh my God. Why? Like, I'm so terrified to plug anything in now. It's just gonna like light on fire. I don't even know how to go about troubleshooting this. <sighs> Man, I'm so defeated right now. I have lots of footage of me trying to fix this and I, still don't know what the problem is. All I know is if I power the microprocessor from a different power source, I don't get the magic smoke and you do not want the magic smoke. So after buying a bunch more Picos, I'm back from Micro Center with seven more Picos. I changed the controller box from having one source of power for everything to having two source of powers, a second one for the microcontrollers. That's where this barrel plug comes from. There's a version of this control box that doesn't have the barrel plug in the lid, but I haven't printed it yet because I'm still trying to make sure all of this still works. With everything vaguely working with the variable power supply, the next step was to do the most scariest electrical thing I have ever done. This is a 360 watt power supply. It provides 24 volts at 15 amps. If you've seen every time I've launched the car, the voltage drops on the variable power supply. This is because the coils are drawing more current than what the power supply can provide, which causes a droop in the voltage. The solution is to buy a $20 power supply off of Amazon. It will provide all the power that I will ever need. Now, this thing is scary. There are no safety controls on it. No safety controls. And so if there is a short on anything, the entire 360 watts will get pumped through it. I wasn't very confident that the two power supply solution actually fixed the control box. So I was very worried that I would start an actual electrical fire by plugging this in. So I did it on my balcony. Okay, it's, it's really cold, so you gotta do this quick. I have the big power supply plugged in just to the control box on the motor drivers. I'm not plugging in the 12 volts yet. I have it hooked up to a power strip. This is the first time I'm flicking it on, so we'll see if it actually lights on fire. Three, two, one. No fire. So now we have triple the power for the launch and it shows. Do you remember the two car test on the swing launch? Well, now we can get close with only one launch. Keep in mind that the swing launch was running about seven or eight launch passes before it got that high. So this is a very big improvement. 
but I made 12 coil housings before I got distracted by Siren's Curse, which you should totally go watch after this. So I hooked them all up. But, but then this happened. I'm trying out this coil and I didn't realize that it was shorted in the plastic is molten. Look, it's like seeping out. Oh God, it's seeping out through the bottom. Holy cow. Yeah, well, this is why I can never sell this, right? Because uh, this is what would be in your living room. When I drop the car with speed, this is what's supposed to happen. It launches. See, comes right back to me. However, if the car doesn't have enough speed, it sort of vibrates back and forth because the magnet pulling it isn't strong enough to really get the process started. And this happens. But now, you can see the current stops flowing because I've added a safety mechanism which auto shuts off the micro. Now that everything is working, for real this time, I had one last problem to address. The magnets are actually so strong on the launch that they're pulling the other magnet mounts out of the cars. This ended up breaking a bunch of my old Legacy Connects cars, so I went and designed a separate mount that I could 3D print. This has the benefit of being mounted by glue and screws as opposed to friction, which actually improves the launch performance even more. So after finding some train models online and printing them out, I now have more realistic looking trains as well. And now the 12 coil launch is too much for my little bunny hill. So I guess it's time to start building the actual ride that I want to make. The ride starts with a slope launch. I ended up putting spacers after coil four to extend the length of the launch. I then built this Jojo roll. Yes, that's what these are called. A good building tip is to add more cross ties into tight turns like this. It will smooth out all of the bumps. The last thing I wanted to build for this update was a circular loop. Can you guess what I'm building yet? With the loop completed, I added on the tubing, and this is the first test runs of my recreation of Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. If you made it this far, get subscribed because there's still a lot more left to build. I still have to make a second launch. I have to program a control system. I have to make the whole layout. Let me know what you think of this video. I put a lot of effort into it and I hope it shows. So I'll see you in the next video, test dummies.